Hello and welcome. You know that every resume is actually job description driven. Meaning, if you do not have a job description in hand, your resume will be a general resume and not a specific one. Second, the observation is nowadays most of the HRs use ATA software under which your resume gets scanned and you are called only when there are enough keywords from your resume coinciding with job description. So if there are good number of keywords that happen to coincide or maybe get equated with the job description keywords, then only your resume gets filtered and you are called. That's the actually catch and most of the resume why they are getting rejected at this point is because of this reason. Now HR executives have made their job little simplified taking the help of technology. I hope every job aspirant who is listening to this would take a good note of it. And that's the reason I am harping today on one great topic that is job description. Everything you need to know about job description. So let's get this going. So what is job description? The term job description somewhat explains itself, doesn't it? It simply means describing each and everything related to the job. The main idea behind a job description is to lay out the information that's related to everything in and around a certain job. Job description plays a very important role in the human resource industry because an employer first makes a job description that consists of the specification of what he needs from a certain employee. After the job description is set, the hiring process starts on the basis of the job description. That's the reason a job description is considered as a primary document when it comes to hiring or reviewing performance of prospective employees and employers respectively. A job description gives both the employer and the employee a clear idea of the requirements of a certain job. The JD job description outlines all the duties and responsibilities that come along with any certain job. It also gives an indication of the types of skills that are required to carry out that particular job. Generally, a detailed JD will consist of all the important details related to any particular job like job role, job title, responsibilities, job summary, etc. etc. So what is the importance of job description? A job description is no more just a hiring tool. It is a vital management tool in today's business world. No one wants any confusion when it comes to employment, right? That's why job description are so important in any business. The JD gives clarity to both the employer and the employee when it comes to specifying what is required and expected from a particular job role. JD are an important asset to any business because it not only helps in finding the most suitable candidate for a particular job, but it also helps the employers while reviewing the performance of the hired employee. The main role of any JD is to make everyone aware of what is required and expected from an employee who is carrying out any particular job. It makes the employees aware that how and on what basis they will be assessed. Nowadays, JD play a much important and wider role than just assisting in screening candidates for a particular job. Why is JD important for an employee? As an employee, you would like to know as much as you can about your job role. Job descriptions help you understand everything you need to know about any specific job role. It outlines the duties and responsibilities that come along with the job role. It clarifies every important detail when it comes to any given job. Why is job description important for an employer? Similarly to an employee, an employer also needs clarity about everything related to any given job role. JD lays out every important detail related to that particular job. This helps the employer in getting a proper idea of what to expect from an employee who is carrying out that specific job. How to write a JD? Now that you know what is JD, why is it important? Let's move on to the most important thing you need to know and that is how to write a job description. It's a very important part and you need to make sure that your job description is a great and informative one. Writing JD isn't a complicated thing to do if you know exactly what you want from it. 
It is a vital tool for your business, not only for recruitment purposes, but also when it comes to the management of employees. Job description should be informative. The main aim of any job description is to describe the job in the best possible way. While writing a JD, make sure you do not miss out on any key points. JD should be written in a way that the information written in it should be enough to explain the job. Your job description should provide clarity. A JD should provide clarity both to both the employer as well as the employee. Your JD should provide all the information required to clarify every important detail related to any given job role. Keep the language as simple as possible. Your JD should be simple enough for everyone to understand and avoid any confusion. Keep in mind that you do not need to overwrite anything. Keep it simple and to the point. Writing JDs is actually a quite easy and straightforward process. Making a convincing job description is vital to helping you attract in the most qualified contenders for the job. Keep it simple and to the point. As per a research conducted by a job portal, it was found that job descriptions between 700 and 2000 characters get up to 30% more application. Mind this, structure of a job description, the format and layout of any JD should be simple and accurate. It should clearly define the needs of the role. However, the actual structure of the JD will typically vary between roles and organizations. A well-rounded JD will generally be structured as follows. 1. Job title. A job title is naturally the first thing that anyone would like to know about. A job title describes an employee's position in the organization. Job titles define the job role and the responsibilities that come along with the job. Second, job summary. Job summary gives us an overview of the JD. It is basically a shorter version of detailed JD. The main of writing job summaries is that people get an idea about the job without actually going through the whole job description. Number third, responsibilities and duties. The main crux of any JD is the part where the responsibilities and duties that come along with any job are explained. It should contain detailed day-to-day -day responsibilities related to the job. This point should be clear enough to outline an employee's responsibility to carry out the expected duties. This section of the JD should lay down the list of all the responsibilities and duties that come along with a given job role. Number fourth, qualification. Conclude your JD by explaining the required qualification in terms of education and experience that are required to carry out the job properly. Job specification and qualifications are derived from job role analysis. Sixth, skills. The skills required to perform the job should be mentioned in the JD as well. The skills that an individual possesses may have a huge impact on the efficiency of his or her job performance. Seventh, compensation. Any employee would be curious to know about the compensation, salary, incentive, TA, DA, etc., etc., that will be received in exchange for the services provided by them. A piece of detailed information about the compensation is an essential part of a good JD. Why you need job description? Job description help your staff duties align with your company vision. They help to clearly outline to applicants their role and responsibilities. JD form the foundation for the development of interview questions. JD can also be used for training and development. JD can also be used as a mean to communicate expectations. JD help define the basis for performance management. Discipline. You can use the JD to discipline an employee who isn't adequately carrying out his job functions. Flexibility is the key when it comes to JD. Creating generic job description is a wise choice. JD emphasize expectations and accountabilities related to the job. Such JD don't require much modification with every minor change in industry. So job description and job specification, what are they? Job description. A job description is a written statement showing job title, tasks, duties and responsibilities involved in a job. A written statement of what the worker actually does how he or she does it and what the job's working conditions are. Common format, title, duties, roles, environmental conditions, authority and responsibilities. Sections of typical job description, job identification, job summary, responsibilities and duties, supervision, relation to other jobs, machine tools and equipment, working conditions. Now let's come to the job description. Job description, the first thing is job identification, job title, name of the job, grade, where it fits in the hierarchy, preparation date, when the description was written, prepared by who wrote the description. Number two, job summary. 
Describe the general nature of the job. List the major functions or activities. 3. Job duties and responsibilities. What needs to be done? How it should be done? Also describes the responsibilities, the supervision of workers. Fourth, relationships, chain of command, reports to whom? Employees immediate supervisor, supervises, employees that the job incumbent directly supervises, works with others with whom the job holder will be expected to work and come into contact with internally, outside the company, others with whom the job holder is expected to work and come into contact with externally. Number two, job specification. What human traits and experience are required to do a job well? Qualifications, prior experience, personality factors, physical characteristics, other attributes and qualities. Characteristics of job specification, physical and demographic, such as physic, height, age, gender, education. Mental aptitude, such as intelligence, judgment, creativity, ability to make decision, etc. Personal characteristics or traits, appearance, features, voice. Emotional characteristics, aggressiveness, temperament, emotional maturity, social characteristics, adaptability in human relationships, flexibility, cooperativeness. Problems with job analysis include as follows. Number one, lack of top management support. Role of top management is to communicate to incumbents that purpose of job analysis is to enhance performance in organization. Number two, lack of training of the analyst in incumbent. An incumbent should be trained about job analysis as the purpose of job analysis. If not, incumbents distort data of job analysis because employee think that process seen as a threat to employee. Three, use of only one method. Each method also has an advantage and disadvantage. So you should use at least two methods for job analysis. Note that job analysis includes both collecting of data and review data so that you should not only use one method. Four, other problems are lack of participation of all stakeholders. Number two, job based rather than person based. Lack of reward for providing quality information. Fourth, insufficient time allowed for the process. Fifth, intentional or unintentional distortion from incumbent. Sixth, absence of a review. Seventh, time spent on job analysis too. Case study. I'm sure with one guideline, one link dropped beneath, which you can find below this video, will be very helpful for you to actually find out job description, what is meant in succinct. So do click that link and follow as a case study. I'm sure you would certainly take care of job description first and then develop your resume and yourself prepare mentally and then go and appear for the interview. Best wishes. Thank you.